Okay, so let's take a look at the problem we have here. So it's asking us to find the maximal area of a right triangle and the hypotenuse is eight. So first let's just draw out a right triangle. It's always good to get a visual of what we're dealing with. So it's a right triangle, a hypotenuse is eight, and we want to find the maximum area. So we know the area of a triangle is one half base times height. We can call this base, we could call this height. Um, and right away, since we know we're dealing with a maximum problem, maximization, and we're trying to maximize area, where we can already think, one, we might want to find the derivative of area, a prime, and then two, find the roots so that we can find where a prime equals zero. And then three, since it's asking us to find the area, then we could use the roots to find where a is at its highest. We'll call that a max. Um, and if that doesn't make sense, just leave a comment below and I'll help explain that in a little more detail. Otherwise, let's jump right into it. So we know that this is true about triangles, that the area is 1 half base times height. We also know another formula, the Pythagorean theorem. So in this case, we'll stick with our variables. h squared plus b squared is going to equal 8 squared, which is 64 here. And since we want to find a prime, let's start thinking about a in terms of one variable. Um, so we know that a equals 1 half bh. Um, let's try to only use b or h here. And we have kind of a system of equations um, where we can use this one here to solve for either h or b, and then we'll be able to use just one variable in our area equation. So let's do that. We'll solve for b. b squared equals 64 minus h squared, or radical 64 minus, minus h squared is, uh, <clears throat> didn't write that very well, but that is what b equals. And now that we have b, we can substitute that into our area. So we can say a equals 1 half of, and then we substitute in radical 64 minus h squared, and then h. And you could do that for h or b. It really doesn't matter. Um, good. So going on to the next page here. So we, now we have a equals 1 half h radical 64 minus h squared. And we're going to remember step two back here. We're going to find a prime. And then we're going to find the roots of a prime. So a prime we'll define as ddh of a or ddh of 1 half h 64 minus h squared. Uh, we can bring 1 half to the outside. And then we have h times radical 64 minus h, minus h squared, which we know we can use the product rule for that. So we can just write h d d h, and I'll rewrite this as 64 minus h squared to the 1 half, just to make it a little easier maybe. And then d d h h times our 64 minus h squared to the 1 half. So this is just 1 half times h. And here, 
can bring out the one half and then the inside term. We see that we have to take the derivative of this term too. So I skipped a little step in there, um, but if you need help with that clarification, just leave a comment. And we know the derivative of h is just one. We're multiplying that by 64 minus h squared to the one half. Okay, so now we can write this as one half of minus h squared, since these cancel there, and 64 minus h squared minus one half plus 64 minus h squared to the one half. And now what we can do is write these as fractions. It'd be nice if I could continue that from the last page. Um, let me see, I took notes on this. So we've got one half And one of our terms was 64 minus h squared. And the other term, we've got an h squared up there. And then 64 minus h squared. Let's just double check that that's right. We have 64 minus h squared and the, um, and the other term. Yep, that looks right. Yeah. So we can multiply the numerator and denominator of this term by radical 64 minus h squared, and then we'll be left with 64 minus h squared over radical 64 minus h squared minus h squared over the same denominator. Now we can combine these terms. So we have 64 minus 2h squared over 2 radical 64 minus h squared. This becomes 32. And now we can just write that as 32 minus h squared over radical 64 minus h squared. Let me just double check that that's right. Good. Um, so remember in step two, we wanted to find the roots or where a prime equals zero. And we know that that's zero when our numerator is zero. So let's just write out 32 equals h squared. And you'll find that h equals radical 32. Uh, and since this isn't our final answer, let's not even bother simplifying that because um, we're trying to give them the maximum area, not the dimensions. And if you recall, B, which we saw for back here two pages ago, B we said is 64, radical 64 minus H squared. So radical 64 minus H squared or radical 64 minus 32 or just radical 32. And it wants to it wants us to give a maximum area. So the formula for our area is one half base times height. And now that we solved for base and height, we can say it's one half radical 32 times radical 32, radical 32 squared over two. And that's 16. So this is our final answer. And one interesting thing about doing this that you might have noticed was that we're left with an isosceles right triangle where base equals height. So that's one thing to notice about solving this problem. We used calculus, but now that we know this property that to maximize area of a right triangle, you set the two legs equal to each other. And if you were given this problem again, 
you don't even need to do all this calculus to say that. You could just say there's a property of right triangles that says if the legs are equal, then the area is maximized. And that would save you a lot of time. You wouldn't have to do any of these derivatives. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll get to it as quickly as possible.